What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be discussing and I'm gonna be responding to a post that the dating coach, Matthew Hussey, made on his Instagram last week. He asked women, what are the most unusual characteristics that you find sexy in a man? This is fascinating because this is women answering a question about female to male attraction. And I think it's fair to say that we're probably best served listening to women when it comes to that. So in this video, I'm gonna be going through the top five responses and discussing why I think they're so attractive to women. So the fifth most popular response was the effortless use of academic words without pretentiousness. This is one of the most fascinating things that came up on the list, but it's so fascinating to me because a lot of men will try and flex on each other and a lot of men will try and flex on women by talking about how much money they earn, how successful their business is, and just how good their life is going. The reality is, is that that doesn't convey confidence and the reality is that it actually shows the opposite. Instead, what it really shows is an insecurity, a need to be validated and a need to be told that they are successful. Let's contrast that though and think about someone who speaks really well. Let's think about someone who's really articulate and let's think about what that says. Firstly, it conveys social intelligence. It conveys the ability to read the room. It conveys the ability to bring people into a conversation and it really just conveys the ability to communicate. And communication is something that is so important to all women. But it also does something else. It also conveys success on a subconscious level. Someone who can come across as intelligent and successful just by the way that they use, that is powerful. And that says so much more than someone who consistently needs to talk about how well they're doing. And I always say it to guys, if you wanna become more attractive, one of the best things that you can do is step out of your comfort zone. And stepping out of your comfort zone in a lot of ways for some guys will be doing things like public speaking, delivering presentations, doing things that feel very difficult based on their natural personality traits. But the benefit that getting better at public speaking has amplifies to all aspects of their life. And it is absolutely something that transfers to their dating life too. So if you wanna become engaging, you want women to find you more exciting, you want women to find you inspiring to be around, get better at speaking well and get better at speaking in a way that involves and engages other people and doesn't come across as an insecure flex. The fourth most popular response was vulnerability. Now vulnerability is something that I talk about a lot on this channel. I think there is a massive misconception that vulnerability is a weakness and that by acknowledging something is challenging or acknowledging that there's something you're struggling with, you're being weak. This is something that I work hand in hand against and this is something that I really try and change the narrative around. Vulnerability for me is the process of acknowledging your feelings and the process of acknowledging your feelings and making a change from there is actually one of the strongest things that you can do. Let's think about what the average guy does if they're struggling with something. They'll bury it, they'll repress it, they won't talk about it, they'll push people away, they'll be short, they'll be blunt, they'll try and be the alpha male and they'll be doing that because they don't want to acknowledge that there is a weakness. That leads the room, that leaves no room for authentic communication, that leaves no room for growth, it leaves no room for development, and it really just sets up a narrative that men and women can't bond because men aren't trying to meet in the middle. By contrast, vulnerability is something that paves the way for communication between men and women, and it paves the way for a really strong, powerful place for growth. In order to grow and in order to develop, you have to acknowledge that there is something that you need to change and vulnerability is the first place to doing so. But vulnerability doesn't mean acknowledging that your life is awful. Vulnerability doesn't mean having people around you telling you that your life is awful. Vulnerability is about acknowledging that something isn't ideal, there's something that you're gonna change and there's something that you might like support with. But by doing so, you're ready, you're on your way to go and you've now put the first step in place for that development to happen. And women will find this attractive, firstly, because it will promote open communication. Secondly, because it will separate you from the average man that can't acknowledge their feelings. And lastly, it will just show you as a man that does whatever he can to progress and a man who does whatever he can to improve. And that is gonna be unanimously attractive. The third most popular response was paying attention to new people in a group and making them feel integrated. Again, this is another really interesting one, not because of what is necessarily directly happening, but because what that ability says about a man who does that. I think there is a misconception and I think there is a transaction that goes on in life that men think that it's always about being the best, that it's always about being the alpha male and it's always about being the loudest and the most dominant person in a group. And whilst of course, alpha male characteristics are attractive to some women, 
what that actually says to others can be the complete opposite. And by trying to protect yourself and push, push yourself as being the main man and the dominant man, you'll actually isolate a lot of people because you'll be a little bit intimidating, you'll seem a little bit threatening, and you won't necessarily seem like the type of person that people would want to be around. However, if you're the other end of that spectrum and you go everywhere that you can in order to make people welcome, you do everything that you can in order to make people feel good, this is actually for me one of the first steps that you can make to become more attractive. People tend to judge you and people tend to base their opinion on you on how they feel when they're not around you. I.e. if you're not there, do they think about you in a positive way? Do they get the urge to message you? Do they want to talk to you? Do they want to look at your social media profile? And of course, if you're that man and you're in a woman's mind like that, that's going to make you very attractive because she's going to be thinking about you a lot more. But if you're making everybody feel welcome, that's going to make you even more attractive too. Again, your social circle is going to broaden because you're going to consistently meet new people. But I think for me, the key takeaway here is that you're going to have the ability to fine tune and create an energy level that will always pull and always be attractive to people. One of the best places to start when it comes to being attractive is to gauge your energy level one level higher than the people that you're talking with. Because people want to be pulled up, people want to have fun and people will see you as being fun if they can come up to your energy level. But if you're too high, people will find you unrelatable and they won't be able to get to your level. And if you're too low, people won't want to come to your level because they'll feel that they're being brought down. So the best thing that you can do is gauge your energy level up so it's one level higher than the people that you're around, be friendly and bring people up with you. And again, hugely attractive and something that I don't think a lot of guys pay attention to. The second most popular trait was calmness. Again, really interesting. And again, I think another one that men misunderstand. So calmness here doesn't necessarily just mean being a calm man. It actually, makes, it actually means making the people around you feel calm too. A lot of guys will hear that women want a strong, dominant man, and they'll think that that really becomes about being loud, brash, outspoken, walking like this, trying to look as big as they can, trying to be almost intimidating. That isn't the case for a lot of women, and I think in a lot of cases that will actually feel intimidating, will actually feel threatening, and won't make people around you feel calm. Calmness is about what can you bring to a social situation. If your partner's nervous, if your partner's anxious, can you calm them down? Can you ground them? Can you level them? Can you put them in a place where they feel ready to go? Can you put them in a place where they feel better? Calmness may also mean, how do you react to stress? Do you go hot and cold? Do you boil off? Do you get loud? Do you snap? Do you get blunt? Essentially, can you manage stress? Can you manage negative emotion? And can you manage bad feelings? Calmness is massively important. And I think men don't really realize what it can be like for women. Some women are generally scared of men on a day-to-day -day basis and some women will go through life worried about how a man may respond to them. So the best thing that you can do is focus on how you yourself can convey a sense of calm and how you yourself can make the women around you feel calm too. That's strong, that's confident, and again, that will be unanimously attractive. And the most popular trait on the list was consistency. So, a lot of dating coaches and a lot of men in general will promote this idea that relationships and dating is all about game playing. It's about being unpredictable. It's about being hard to read. It's about having multiple women on the go so that if one gets rid of you, you've got another one to go straight to. So of course, this is one way of playing the dating game and this is one way that can actually work for both men and can actually work for women as well. But here's the reality. Game playing, dating multiple people and all the things around that are really just a way of you stopping yourself and preventing yourself having intimacy because you're scared of having that intimacy because you're scared that you may not be able to handle that intimacy. Of course, if you're at a point in your life where you want multiple sexual partners and intimacy genuinely does scare you, that's absolutely fine. But if that's not where you're at and you're not being consistent and you're game playing and you're trying to be hard to read because you think it's keeping yourself safe, that's never gonna work. That's never gonna make you attractive and it's gonna make you seem very weak in the long run. I always say this, and I think this is something that people do not pay enough attention to. If you want to be attractive and you want to have respect for yourself, become a man of your word. If you say that you're gonna do something, make every effort that you can to get it done. If you say that there's something that you want out of life, make sure that you hold yourself accountable in order to get into that. And by doing that, you'll become more consistent. And by doing that, you'll become a man who can handle, process, and deal with relationships. Again, 
this is attractive and this is something that people don't talk about much because it's not sexy it's not a technique and it's certainly it's not something that will pave instant results but being a man of your word being consistent holding yourself accountable is the first step to respecting yourself it's the first step to rating yourself and those two things are the best place that you can start when you really start to try and become attractive to women and i think the answer and the fact that this comes up as number one says it all consistency is important to women consistency is, consistency is something that they find attractive and consistency is something that they want so that's something that should become the focus for your dating journey and that's it those were the five most popular traits i hope you got a lot from this video and i hope you've taken something from it if you liked it please can I ask you to click like and subscribe down below if you really liked it i am also offering one-on-one -on -one coaching at the website also down below but as always guys nothing but love Take care and I'll see you all in the next one.